Hello, 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 hello. This is the second try at the uh, WP Builds Weekly News. Uh, we've just had a right old nightmare with Facebook and we were trying to go live. I spent about 15 minutes failing to go live. Apologies about that. I mean, it turns out it's not me. The guys at the webinar platform have just informed us all that the API for going live on Facebook just changed and they weren't aware that that was going to happen. So that's why it's pre-recorded. So here we are. Today, uh, talking about the WordPress news, we have got three guests. We have Chris Badgett. Hello, Chris. Hello. Good to be here. Yeah, good. Chris, um, I'll give you all a Well, actually, Chris, let's do it this way. Let's make this a formal way of doing it. Do you want to tell us who you are and what your background with WordPress is quickly? Sure. I've been with WordPress for about 10 years. I've uh, been on all sides of it, but these days I co-founded a plugin called Lifter LMS, which is a tool for creating, selling, and protecting engaging online courses from your WordPress website. I like it. The elevator pitch. And it's on offer at the moment, if I'm not very much mistaken. You've got a deal. It is. On, so. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. So That's it. Lifter That's loves, the code. Yeah. <laughs> Lifter loves teachers. I sent a, yes, yes. I sent the email out this morning, just so that you know, Chris. I sent an email out to all of our oh, listeners just to say, you know, get the fifteen percent off. And we also have uh, same as last week, Paul Lacey. Hi, Paul. Introduce yourself. Hello. So yeah, Paul Lacey here, and uh, I run a <laughs> web agency called the Dicky Bird Studio. I haven't got as good a uh, off the tongue USP as uh, Chris there, though. I'm just going to say I'm a web agency. That'll do. It'll come over time. You'll uh, yeah. you'll, you'll get a, a way of work. You worked it out. And also we have Vito Peleg from. Um, well, you tell us where you're from, Vito. Right. So um, yeah, just just roll with what Chris started. I started building websites when I was uh, 14 years old, uh, but I started working with clients from the back of the van where I was uh, touring the world with a uh, rock band that I had at the time. Uh, after that, I started building an agency here in London. Uh, grew up really fast, and now we're uh, we're pushing all of our efforts towards a brand new plugin that we're about to launch in a month's time. It's called WP Feedback, with the goal of helping uh, WordPress professionals like all of us um, uh, get content, approve designs, and provide ongoing support uh, for the clients visually. Great. It's worth checking out, WP Feedback. Um, so I'm over at the WP Builds website. We've pushed the news out, out last week, <laughs> and we will... Uh, sorry, have I said something? <laughs> no, Paul, Paul raised his hand. Oh, I see. Sorry, Paul. Go for it. Apologies. I just got. I did, I'm just googling Vito, and is your band called ROI? No, ROI is actually my oh. first name. Oh, so is it Chase the Chase the Ace? Chase the Ace, the name of the band. Roi is what wow. it's called in, in Israel, but no one can pronounce it here. Other than being cool that it spells R O Y, uh, it's been a nightmare having this name in an English speaking country. So, uh, so hang I go on. by my middle name. Vito, is your name Roy? It's a Roy. Roy Vittorio Peleg. It's Roy, isn't it? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't use it. <laughs> exactly. I'm an Englishman. It's Roy. Um, it's, yeah, so we'll call you Vito because it's a whole lot easier. <laughs> so on the news this week, we've got a few different categories. We've got WordPress core, we've got community security, loads of plugin news, and then a bit about the, nothing to do with WordPress at the end. Please do keep waving your hands at me, guys, because the way I've got my setup at the moment, I'm looking at one screen and I can't see you guys waving your hands. So please wave, wave, wave. So the first thing that I spotted this week of interest to me, at least anyway, was the fact that WordPress 5.2 release candidate 2 has come around. Um, you guys, especially Vito and Chris being plugin developers, a couple of things to notice on this. We've got uh, proper translations of the recovery mode notification emails and improvements to the site health work uh, to how that works basically it's a tiny point release with a couple of tweaks couple of track tickets probably not a lot to say if you're into beta testing uh it's out now like now today it came out and you've got a few weeks i think before i'm bef oh, sorry a couple few hours really to test the rest of that um so keep your eyes on the wordpress dashboard you've got a, a point release 5.2 coming in the next few hours anything to add no, it's a small update. Nothing. Uh, I actually checked it out. And it's nothing no, major. nothing particularly of interest. Nevertheless, you know, if you're following WordPress and you've got like 150 sites, a point release is worth noting. Don't necessarily just click the button immediately. Just read the change log and see because there might be something in there that balks your site. You never know. 
Right. Okay. This is next one then. Moving on quickly. This is on the WP Tavern website. You may have noticed the WP Tavern website. I've not used it before. It's a solid place to go for WordPress news. I, I believe that it's owned by, is it owned by Automatic? Yeah, Chris? Well, he, he invested in, he yeah. paid Jeff to the yeah. guy behind one of the, I'm not sure exactly the arrangement, but Automatic does invest in the in it. Yeah, um, and they're solid. They always seem to get the news stories as if straight from the horse's mouth, like they're the first port of call for me. And they've got this one. Now, when, um, I don't know if you remember the controversy, maybe it didn't pass your radar. About November time when WordPress 5.0 came around, there was a, quite a lot of controversy because not only was Gutenberg a big change for everybody, but the fact that Gutenberg didn't really have the S, sorry, not SEO, the accessibility chops. Um, in other words, if you were anything other than using it on a screen, if you're using a screen reader or anything else, uh, it was, everybody was shouting very loudly, look, this is not fit for use. We're going backwards. So the guys over at WP Campus, who are a kind of like a, an agency, I believe, that build for universities and they have products based around universities. And so obviously, yes, um, accessibility is crucial to their business. They offered to put together this accessibility audit and they they managed to raise, I think, a fixed amount of dollars. I think they needed 30,000 because I think of the pressure that that created, the fact that they'd done it off their own backs, uh, automatic delved into their pocket and said, right, we'll fund whatever you don't raise. Nice. So it's done. This thing is published 329 pages, fairly technical. Didn't read it all. I've read the synopsis. Uh, essentially it's a, it, it's a bit of a train wreck from an accessibility point of view. Any, any thoughts on this? I can read, read the accessibility stuff. Chris, go for it. Um, I think the big issue with it when Gutenberg rolled out is they wanted more accessibility stuff in it from the beginning. So you design around it instead of trying to retrofit fit it. Mm -hmm. So that's where the whole debate is around and why that's happening. Um, I yeah. actually recently interviewed somebody for my podcast who has a, a disability and does courses to help certain kinds of businesses become more accessible. But it is a big deal and it's a huge percentage of the population that uh, that has um, accessibility issues of one kind or another. And the web is very important, especially when you're homebound for communication, community, and even work income. There's a lot, there's a whole market of people that it's not a choice to work from home. They have to work yeah, yeah. from home. Yeah. So I think it's WordPress being an inclusive organization. I think that we're headed in the right direction. The first step is, identifying all the problems and then let's just start chipping away at it and prioritize it. Yeah, the 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 quote that came uh, in this article says, please use this report as it, as, it, as it is intended to be, constructive feedback in support of the WordPress project. So in other words, you know, um, the, the report is not supposed to be so damning. I think I used the word train wreck, which was somewhat um, uh, sensationalist, but um, that's the point. It's supposed to be a, a beginning. However, scrolling to the bottom, this is a bit more of a train wreck statement. It says Gutenberg. So this is their um, executive summary with uh, for people using uh, Gutenberg who have, it literally says, Tenon's executive summary concludes that the new editor is a step backwards for people with disabilities quote Gutenberg has significant and pervasive accessibility problems the likes of which amount to a step backwards for the users with disabilities over the legacy editor our user base testing backed by data from our technical review indicates that the accessibility problems are severe in nature we feel concerned that Gutenberg currently at current accessibility issues will prove problematic for website owners who deploy Gutenberg Therefore, organizations which have high risk profiles should consult legal counsel before using it and may want to choose to use the legacy editor instead. OK, there you go. I go, Paul. Um, I think the, the other thing as well is just the uh, the Gutenberg editor at the moment. I imagine the focus is on like the replacement aspects of the classic editor. But as far as I know, you know, the, the big plans for Gutenberg is that it will replace customizer, replace widgets, replace like almost everything. Yep. So I don't know what the situation is um, like with with things like widgets and customizer from an accessibility point of view. So I don't know if like they if that if Gutenberg replaced those things right now, would it make it even worse? Uh, so I don't know if there's like a bigger picture thing just in the future that it's not just the text editor. 
to be concerned about. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know. I have the answer to that. I think it just no. feels like the the guys the guys over at Core just wanted to sort of ship it because it was working to, to the specification that it needed to work in order for it to be in 5.0. The accessibility guys were saying, no, wait. Uh, and they shipped it anyway, and so now, as Chris said, we're trying to sort of retrofit it, and and that's that's where we are. And I remember when I had Matt Mullenweg on the podcast, he was basically saying, you know, the sky won't fall down, and it mm. kind of didn't for most of us. It certainly didn't for me, mm. although I'm not a heavy user of the new um, classic. Sorry, the new block editor, to be honest. Um, but still, you know, that is a fairly damning report. So things will yeah. have to probably change and maybe the rate of acceleration of new features or widgets going in or page layouts or whatever's coming next in iteration number two. Maybe it just need maybe we just need the breaks. I don't know. Okay. There seems to be on? moving forward quickly. I mean, they yeah. seem to be fixing things as they're found. So, you know, another six months, who knows where it'll be, yeah. but they're trying it as far as I can tell. Yep, yep, I think you're absolutely right. It is going at a breathtaking pace, you know, and the third party ecosystem, third party ecosystem that's building up around it and pushing the boundaries yeah, of what really it can fast. do is really going hell for leather. Okay, so that's my that's my take on WordPress core for this uh for this month. There was one other one about word the WordPress month of April, but really I think we'll just miss that one out and go straight on to the fact that WordCamp US uh, is on again this is on the wp tavern website wordcamp us it is in the city of st louis uh this year which i believe is on the mississippi river um chris maybe can give us an insight into that american geography i think so it's either mississippi okay. or missouri I'm not okay sure. we'll go it's it's yeah. over sort of like towards the center on the east a bit yeah. for, for those of us who don't live in North America. Um, so 1st of November to the 3rd of November 2019 in St. Louis uh, at the American Center Convention Complex. 50 bucks, 50 American bucks if you want to go. All the speaker stuff hasn't really started yet, but there will be apparently a track for children, children who are under nine. This year, parents bringing children under nine uh, years old have a separate ticket option where they can indicate whether or not they are interested in a one a, a, in an on-site child care during the conference. Nice. Um, and I also think I've got a feeling there's like a, a children's track as well. So it's not just okay. There's like the crash option. I think there might be a an option to to put them through kind of WordPress coaching. I know that in WordPress Nordic recently they had a little thing and it wasn't just about wordpress there was a whole bunch of stuff like minecraft was featured coding i think really summed it up i think that's great there's a bunch of hotel rooms which have been organized so if you get in early you can um you can get your tickets da 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 what else is there to say and anyone here going chris is going i'll i'll probably go and uh, i sponsored wordcamp us last year and it was actually my first wordcamp us and i heard people say that it's like our super bowl event and it was a t it was awesome. I've been to yeah. a lot of work camps, but I've never been to like there were two thousand or three thousand, whatever it was. It's a lot of people all yeah. drinking the same Kool Aid. It's pretty fun, yeah. and there, and there's a lot going on. It's it's yeah. it's a great way to network, especially for people who typically work remotely all over the world. The the whole WordCamp thing is fairly new to me. I mean, I'm only about three years into going, and I've probably been to about five. And I think Paul's probably been to just about all the ones that I've been to. But I love it. I have a really great time. It's just fabulous meeting people, as you say, who are drinking the same Kool-Aid. Because it's really where I live. It's not very often I get to speak to somebody deeply about WordPress. But mainly, you know, as soon as I close this computer, I'm back to sort of childcare and all those kind of things. And it's nice to stand in the same room and have a beer and talk about WordPressy things. And you're right, the, the US one is massive um i believe the european one is bigger yeah. um but obviously uh you know uh it's not all based around one country which is quite intriguing so yeah get your tickets go veto are you going to the european one uh, i am i'll see you there then that's the yeah. one, that's the one that i am going to yeah and, and actually um well thanks to going to WordCamp uh, last month that's pretty much the reason why I'm sitting with you guys here today. I That's met right. Paul over there and uh, met you, Nathan. Well, Paul introduced us and then, uh, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. In, a, in a in a drunken moment, I agree to have Vito on. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what he was doing for. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It's great. I really, really enjoy it. And like I say, it's about the only time you get to nerd out on these things. And I think the more that, like, I think even still, despite the fact that you hear this message over and over again, there is a lot of people who take that with a pinch of salt and think actually it can't be that good. Well, I think if you go into the room and you're prepared to talk. Um, and you can get over the fear of standing in the corner, you know, go out there, talk to people. It, it's amazing, you know, yeah. break the just ice. Just go once. If you haven't, just go once, yeah. you know, you're yeah. just going to come back again and again. It, it was a transforming experience for me, especially, like you're saying, Nathan, because we're usually um, sitting on our own. Even when yeah. you've got, like, employees and, uh, and, and you're already growing, um, you're still in this kind of cocoon of being, uh, you know, you're the guy pulling the strings. So, um, so just talking to like-minded people and seeing that uh, uh, that we're basically all experiencing the same highs and the same lows yeah. um, really makes a difference, uh, you know, in, in the day-to-day activity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and try to stay for the social as well. I think like a lot yeah. of the really good friendships, you know, sort of, you know, begin when, when you know, the, the event sort of finishes for the day and then you just start chatting about all the different things and everything. And also if people are ner- nervous about going as well, then there's usually some people, um, you know, who who are there at WordCamps to help people who are a bit shy um, and will actually, um, you know, come and, and come and meet you when you come in and stuff like that and, mm-hmm. and make sure that you're okay and introduce you to a few people and just get you through the door and stuff i can chase chase all sorts of awesome things that have happened for my for me personally in my business in the last two years as a result of going to word camps there's a, i mean there's all sorts of crazy things mm-hmm. so. are you guys yeah. going to the smaller ones as well so are you going to bristol for example i went to the manchester one last year and the year before that um, and I'll probably go again, um, but I know there's Bristol and there's all sorts of ones going on all over the place. No, I haven't, um, but I should, and I would like to, but um, I haven't yet. Yeah, I went um, to Manchester. I want to go to Bright. I want to go to Bristol, but I doubt I'll be able to make it. But if I can, I will. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. Good word camps. Great stuff. And there's also the whole meetup thing, which is not necessarily connected to WordPress, but the, you know they're far more geographically. Yeah. Uh, small you know you might get a dozen people going but they're on once a month and they might be in you know within 10 miles in of the car so the next one actually there's only one bit of security news this week but it was written up i think three different times by three different uh, publications and i've just picked one i've picked word fence there's this prop there was a problem in woocommerce any of you actively deploying woocommerce out there in the wild yeah definitely yeah okay uh, in which case, this would definitely have affected you. A vulnerability was found. It, it kind of irks me. This I know that there's a there's a there's a way of doing this. There's a way of di- disclosing. If you find a vulnerability, the, the, the procedure is basically contact the plugin developer, give them three months. It's called responsible disclosure. Give them three months to fix it, and then publish whatever you like. You know, and if after three months they haven't patched it, publish it anyway, but give them a chance. So. This vulnerability, according to the WordFence article, was published not like that. This zero-day vulnerability was just posted by somebody who found it and thought, ah, I'll write a blog post about it. So, a bit annoying. And, of course, therefore, the attackers jump on the bandwagon. And WooCommerce has got a big target on its back Mm, because it's not only massive in terms of its installation base, but it's massive in terms of it deals with, you know, credit cards and orders and addresses and people's real identity yeah yeah um you know but not just the person running the website the people who've placed orders their real data logs is 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 held somewhere um and so this came out and essentially it's a a vulnerability which means that you could upload arbitrary files into the uh, media library and of course those files could be anything at all it was mitigated in that you had to have a certain checkbox clicked in the WooCommerce um, settings. So that was something. But then when WordFence were poking around, they found another vulnerability. um, And I can't remember what that was, but I think it was arbitrary code execution. So this was a big one. Go and patch WooCommerce. um, And yeah, just make sure that you're up to date because I believe it now has been affected. But two things come out of this. Number one, please, if you are clever enough to figure out these exploits, please don't put people's websites at risk please put it somewhere responsibly and wait 
And the second thing is, right, slightly controversially, what do we all make of word fences policy? Which is that if you're on the free tier, their firewall does not include the rule to stop this. And I think it's 30 days. So like, right, they've got to make a living. So yeah. on the one hand, they've got to make a living. That's absolutely clear. On the other hand, they know that this vulnerability exists and they've blocked it with their firewall rule. I realize you cannot square this circle, but what do you think, Paul? It's a sales funnel. Like, what do you do with a sales, with yeah. a sales funnel? You create a situation where a customer doesn't realize they've got a problem. Then you provide the solution to that problem. Yeah. At, and then, and then that's a, that's a sales funnel. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a slightly ambiguous sales funnel and it, but you know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I guess it reminds me of a sales funnel in the medical industry, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like yeah. it. I don't yeah. like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I am, um, I have to say, I'm a happy user of WordFence. I've got a, I've got quite a few WordFence licenses. Happily, I got them before they went up in price about three years ago. But, um, but so I've got no axe to grind because I'm happily paying uh, the, the money. But it is, it's an interesting kind of philosophical position that they have to take. They have to alert everybody that this stuff can kill your website and will protect you, but just not yet. Um, wait for 30 days and then we'll protect you. And of course, by that point, the, the problem's gone. So you're right, Paul, it's a sales oh. funnel. I get it. And Vito, sorry. So it's basically, they, they're saying that after 30 days, they will include it in the, in the free mm -hmm. uh, plugin? Right, yeah, right. everything so that they now, jump on yeah. it. So that makes sense. You know, it's not that they're just completely blocking this. I think that's even fair uh, as is, you know, if they would just block that and say, OK, this is a premium feature. If you want that, that's cool. Uh, but giving people that have that urgency within their business or already managing a lot of people's uh, contacts, they should have a premium license for a software like this anyway. Uh, so, uh, so I think that's kind of a good opportunity uh, to push someone just in the right direction, rather than uh, it being seen like a marketing trick or or sales kind of a, a sleazy sales trick. Yeah, well, they're a very successful company. I mean, they write extensively on these subjects. They've obviously got researchers yeah. out checking this stuff in the wild. The the, the exact wording is WordFence firewall uses both pre ah. Now, I'm going to seem like an idiot now because, look, whether this was the wording before or whether it's the wording now, it does say word fence firewall users, both free and premium, are protected from right. malicious script uploads. But I, I know that in the past I've definitely read uh, things where, where it wasn't. So although on this case, I some humble pie uh, I'm eating, but <laughs> it, it, that what we were saying is, is definitely true. And um, and I've happily paid for it in the past. I wonder if people get put off by that, though. You know, they actually actively don't install it because they do not like the fact that this is uh, this is a feature. But there's no way of getting around it. Anything to add or should we move on? The the, the upload rule is just a standard rule within WordFence. So it's mm. just, you know, just to stop that. So but the, the stuff that they don't put in for 30 days is is new firewall rules. So right. they update the firewall every 30 days or so. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of fair, but it it kind of sucks for those who don't understand. I think that's yeah. the main thing. But they should understand, like Vito said. Ideally, they should. Uh, it's yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, if they don't understand, then uh, just a little push from the from the service provider should you know push them in the right direction. If they don't know mm -hmm. what what's happening, they should count on the experts. In this case, uh, mm -hmm. WordPress. Yeah. Okay, loads of plugin news this week. Absolutely loads of stuff. Some of it is a little bit of a relic from my past. I don't use quite a few of these anymore. Uh, the first one is all about Genesis. Anybody still rocking Genesis sites? No, interesting. Anybody did in the past? No, actually yeah. I didn't. Yeah. yeah, so three out of four. Um, <laughs> So it, it was huge. I think I, I think when I began using WordPress, it was like the the thing that everybody talked about all the time. It was absolutely enormous. And uh, perhaps perhaps I don't know. They lost their way a little bit. I don't know if the revenue is as good as it was. But they've been bought out by WP Engine, and WP Engine of you know, I think they've got a fairly deep pockets. They're making some updates, and it's gone over to I want to call it 2.1.0, but I think it's 2.10 because they keep talking about 
like you know the old version 2.9 they've got um new wp cli commands so you there's wp genesis settings which will retrieve the settings wp genesis settings update so developers can update settings wp genesis db version so they've added a few hooks in they've also uh, made it so that in the future you can do this um kind of one click install and it'll bundle all the plugins that you want to be bundled in with it automatically um, plus, they're making making inroads into um, having it so that everything's done in the customizer. It says Genesis 2.10 will begin the process uh, of moving Genesis settings management into the WordPress customizer. Rather than having their own pages, theme and SEO settings will now appear in the customize window with w within WP Admin. So there you go. I mean, I suppose most most themes have done that to some moving extent. Back. Yeah, everyone's moving um, there. But it, yeah, it kind of feels to me like it was. Maybe it's not as popular as before. Uh, maybe it's had its had, had its moment of absolute glory. Don't know. But there we go. If there's nothing to add, I will move on. BodyPress. Now we talked last week, and Chris mentioned how useful it would be being a plugin developer to have this new site health info screen. In other words, uh, if uh, if you've got a problem with a particular plugin in the future, hopefully if you uh, adapt your plugin in some way then it will report back to the site owner why you're facing the white screen of death. In other words, if if the front end white screens, this decoupling will mean that the admin still works and hopefully give you some useful log data. Well, BodyPress seem to have jumped into this and they've they've supplied what I think is like the template, the boilerplate for how other plugin developers will probably do this. So there's a screenshot and it shows, for example, it's telling you what the version number is um, and various other yes, no criteria. So useful feedback. Yeah. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, I think this is really cool. We we actually modeled WooCommerce and kind of for three years, we've had our own just site health thing. So when people submit tickets, like we can quickly see the configurations they have nice. and support can solve the problem you know, 10 times faster. And just seeing this in the WordPress core, I think it's a beautiful thing to let people self-serve because as an agency owner or freelancer, you know, it's never fun when somebody's like freaking out and their site's down, you know, just allowing people to have more education around what could possibly be wrong and allowing yep. them to self-correct is great. Yep, yep, really I agree. good. Yeah, so hopefully that will be in core 5.2 in the next few hours. Uh, okay, so another big piece of news, if you're an Elemental user, well, this isn't, I mean, it's it's a bit of tabloid news, but it's nice if you're an Elemental user. Uh, Talk Magazine, which um, I don't also know who's behind it. Talk. It's, Talk it's, Magazine is, it's run by a big hosting company, isn't it? Like Flywheel or, do you know which uh, one, Vito? WP Engine again. Yeah. Is it? They've yeah. taken okay. over. Yeah, well, everything in WordPress is consolidating, that's yeah. for sure. Um, so they run this competition every year. It's, it's a strange competition in that they'll put two completely, utterly, randomly generated plugins side by side and say, which is better? And the idea is, you know, so literally you could have a page builder next to a plugin which deals with Stripe payments or something, and they've got nothing to do. But still, in the end, after voting over and over and over and over and over again, you get to a semi-final and a final. And, and this year, Elementor won. Pat on the back to Elementor, big cheer. Yeah. I mean, what? yeah. I mean, you can't argue. The numbers speak for themselves. It's massive. Yeah, Absolutely massive. Sure. Yeah. One for the last couple of years by WPMU Dev Smush. Vito. So, like, uh, I actually think it's a pretty cool idea to do this uh, com competition. Um, but uh, the way that they set this, they set it up, well, it starts proper, you know, where you just uh, it's based on categories. So, you, so you battle like uh, LMS systems against themselves or uh, page builders against themselves, which makes sense. Uh, and then when you get to the higher levels, then uh, obviously the most common plugins will prevent. So. You know, it made sense between Toolset and ACF and between, uh, I don't know, Divi and Elemental. But once uh, ACF was against Elemental, it didn't really make any uh, any sense. Thank uh, you. That's good clarification because I've never jumped in at the point where it made sense. I've only ever <laughs> jumped in at the point where it's like, what? what are those two got to do with each other? So that's good. The early stages, I guess at some point, yeah, they're not going to make sense. It's it yeah, but it's cool. Okay. You know, it's cool for plugin uh, plugin authors to be at the top of their category. So, uh, so you know, for example, if if uh, if uh, Chris's CMS is uh, LMS is uh, 
is the top of the category, then it's a great PR thing for you to take or yep. to take from there and so on. So even if it doesn't, which I imagine it's going to be nearly impossible to get to that level of Elemental or anything like that. Um, but uh, but even within the smaller categories, I think it's a cool PR boost. It's a great, it's generates content for the plugin, fa- plugin authors to um, to go and run with it and, you know, just to rile up the community a little bit around yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. favorite tool. Yeah. Chris, do you actually do any of this stuff? Do you promote in these ways? You know, do you get involved in these competitions? Because I received a few promotional emails from companies that had got towards the end of this competition asking yeah. for me to vote. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's a nice excuse to, to hit your email list, I suppose. I would have done it if I had if I had known about it. I did work to be on uh, WP Engines. Like, there's like a featured recommended plugins thing that I applied for. But um, I'm always happy to get publicity if I can go find yeah. it, especially, <laughs> especially if it's like fun. Is this something that um, you apply for, or they run it on their own? I don't know. It's out every year. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, this time next year, it runs for a, it runs for a fair amount of time. I seem to remember that this has been going for weeks. Um, I, think, I, I just think it's interesting because in WordPress, there's like the mega plugins, like Elementor, yeah. two million users, and uh, advanced custom fields, like these really big form plugins fit in that category. But then there's the more niche plugins. So is it always about the ubiquity or let's? I don't, I don't know if they do the niches. It's uh, it it's starts like that, yeah. It, yeah. start, it starts small, but then when you get to to the semifinals, it's always going to be the uh, you know the titans battling. <laughs> yeah. I think Chris, here we go. Right, Chris, you need to plug your fan and say Chris is going to win this next year. Yeah, uh, man. Man. plug in madness twenty twenty. Lifter LMS is going to represent <laughs> underdog the David. <laughs> I think you're right, though. I think, if, you know, if you've got a plugin that's doing one tiny little thing, the chances of you getting those votes are pretty small. Yeah. And um, and I think possibly a lot of it is hitting your email list. But it's nice because I saw, again, um, Chris, the publicity off the back of winning it was massive. You know, loads yeah. of people wrote blog posts to say who the winner was. And I suppose if, like Vito says, you were the category winner, you can still, there's probably still quite a lot of publicity surrounding yeah. that. So that's quite, and also you put it on your, website i'm going to start a competition (laughs) something else just in that vein uh benefit wordcamp us i was there they actually interviewed me for a documentary they're doing about wordpress and open source right and uh just the publicity like if you have an agency or a product um wordcamps and just like getting out there and getting in the media and networking with other companies is really powerful Yeah. yeah 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 i'm sure you're right um Okay, moving on. The next one is a Beaver Builder. So, sorry, just to congratulate Elemental one more time. Very well done uh, and deserved, I'm sure. Uh, next one is about Beaver Builder, although not. Last week we talked about the fact that this power pack for Beaver Builder add on had integrated. I can't remember now what it was that we said about them last week, but there's a new one this week in that they've released these nice forms, form layouts, search form layouts. I know that um, Paul in particular is a massive. Massive Beaver Builder um, advocate. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that Paul's rows are part of Beaver Builder Core? Oh, cool! If you if you look at if you go to uh, install the the pre-installed rows, that's Paul. Paul did that. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, but I met those guys because I went to WordCamp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was there. It was that's it how was it not, happened. It, it was a bit messy. It was. <laughs> that, yeah, it, it was. was a really business-like meeting. Yeah, you know, involving yeah. balancing your laptop on the corner of a beer bottle, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It was, it was like I say, it was a very business-like, you know. Meeting. I think you just walked up and said, "Can I put my rose in your builder?" Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and they said yes, so that was yeah. it, done. <laughs> yeah, no, they're really sweet though. They're very, very, very helpful, and I've used them a lot. Anyway, an aside. So these, I like these. I think these look cool. I think the search form is a much needed thing. Why not? If you're a PowerPack user, it's another reason to buy it. If you're not, they look great. There's a few, you know, squared off designs and rounded edges. And you've got like buttons that then go full screen, occupy like a pop up, fill the whole screen with a search box. It's nice. Really, really nice. So well done, Panit and his team. Vito, you were going to say. They actually, with Beaver Builder, uh, if we're already in the news section, uh, they just hit 1 million uh, users this month or 
or this yes. week even. Yes, I should mm. have mentioned that. Yeah, that, I think I'd left that one out because it felt like it had happened last week. But yeah, they've got one million users. It's an interesting statistic, actually. I don't know what the don't know what the difference of statistics is between Beaver Builder and Elementor because I think Elementor has a very very significant amount of people uh, on the free one, mm. um, right. and because it's so generous, um, and the Beaver Builder one is less useful shall we say on the free version but um but obviously this kind of parity there when you when you pay for the pro license of either uh were you going to say something chris oh i was just saying i believe elementor has two million free users yep yeah ah, it's yep. two million free users or two million like uh total i think right it's like yeah. one million and two million total i'm not sure actually yeah. Yeah, that's we'll actually get... an interesting breakdown to figure out which ones are premium mm-hmm. which ones are just uh you know like uh uh, one-off users. Yeah. That's that's an interesting uh, number yeah. to try and figure out. They did a that that was the really clever, very clever bit of marketing I think on the part of Elementor to to mm. push out. I remember at the time everybody saying, "Is this free? Is that that really that much is free?" Um, to get so many free users, and then the price is modest for the yeah. you know although you can't white label it, which you can with Beaver Builder if you're prepared to pay the extra. Uh, like $199 per year with Elementor. There isn't that option, but it's only $99 for the, for the whole thing, including everything they do. So, Paul? Yeah, I just going to say that the free version of Elementor is is hugely you know, amazing compared to anything else free you can get mm-hmm. out there. I mean, mm-hmm. when we did the um, the webs, the, the, uh, the uh, Generate Press sites, uh, where a few of us built, uh, you know, these pre-made sites for Generate Press, and there was a couple of us doing Beaver Builder, a couple of us doing Elementor, and we pretty much had to all decide that we were going to use the pro version because the Beaver Builder free version just would not, you couldn't, you could barely create a website with it, with mm. the free version. The only way mm. we could do it was by pulling in the Power Pack and the UABB add-ons that they right. have for free as well. And that okay. kind of patched, patched it. So yeah, it is amazing marketing that they did to push about a product that good and for free. I know that the Beaver Builder guys are very happy with the position that they've got. You know, they're yeah. not at all. Um, they've just got a different, and then they're, they're marketing it more. I think now to people who are agencies. You know, people who are not using their page builder to build one site for their business or whatever it is. They're marketing it more to agencies, people who are building multiple sites, and uh, it's working. A million um, is fabulous. So you know, there's. WordPress is so big, they can all have a slice of the cake. So a would you say that like, big cake. like uh, because because we all know that Beaver Builder is uh, almost unusable in the in the basic version of it. Now uh, that they have like 1 million users compared to the elemental ones, maybe they even have a lot more than them in terms of uh, revenue coming in. Yeah, I mean, it is it is possible that, that the two revenue streams could be similar. I don't think we'll ever know. Um, but it's an interesting one. Chris? Maybe Chris knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just want to say it's really interesting. And like in terms of playing by the WordPress rules or, or by the WordPress culture, it seems to reward giving away as much value as you possibly can for free yeah. Yeah. and then monetize it, you know, and then your pricing yeah. on the back end plays a huge impact on that. Like, it, uh, like, uh, yeah, like how much you give away for free, then what you do for pricing is can dramatically change the thing so that the numbers don't necessarily reflect, you know, re- total revenue or whatever. Yeah, so. yeah. Hey, we're back to WordFence, aren't we? You know, the idea of giving away a ton of free stuff and then adding a little bit on the end. Um, speaking of free stuff, I've just gone all blurred. There we go. Um, speaking of free stuff, we've got a, a new thing called Lazy Blocks. Now, Clearly, at some point in its future, the intention is for Gutenberg to kind of to do the job of a page builder. At least that's where I feel the direction of travel is going. And obviously, we're not there yet. But things like lazy blocks are a nice addition to getting people on board. It says over at lazyblocks.com, lazy blocks is a Gutenberg blocks visual constructor for WordPress developers. You can create custom meta fields as well as blocks with output HTML. Add editor controls to your blocks using a drag and drop visual constructor. Create post templates with predefined blocks, any post type. It looks great. I can't see why this isn't a cool thing. Uh, I don't know if anybody's played with it, but it, you know, basically it enables you to come up with your own blocks with very little code, drag them in. Obviously, if you're, I don't know, making a real estate website, you might have a house block with all of the associated fields for a house, images and descriptions and prices and so on and so forth. 
and now you can do it. And this is this is kind of where it felt like it was going a year ago. You know, one size fits all. It does everything. So it's kind of, dare I say, it, it's kind of like an ACFE tool set type thing. But um, even more for non-developers. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Or you, yeah. if you're a power user, you can use this and take it further or whatever. Yeah. So the article, I also link to the sales page, which is the most minimal sales page. It basically says free download and takes you to the other link, which is the lazy blocks on the WP.org website. Currently, not many reviews, but 14, five star, three, four star. So, you know, they've got repeater field, text field, text area, number range, URL, email, password, image, gallery, and all of them, all the things that you basically are going to need. So very cool. Um, you know, I'm not for a minute suggesting it's got the capabilities of something like ACF, which is just breathtakingly cool. But, um, you know, it's it's the beginning and it's free. So there you go. Like, all I'm, right, I'm not Paul. Really sure about, sorry. Like uh, when it comes to these kind of things, because that was my assessment initially as well, that it's going, it's, it's going to be here to replace page builders. But since the idea came to life and Elemental came to the market, it kind of seems like uh, there's no way they can catch up with, with the advances that Elemental is leading the market and everyone else is kind of trying to catch up as I see it right now. Um, but <laughs> but Gutenberg is so far behind, um, I, I can't see it happening, you know, even in a few years time. I think from my point of view, you know, I often forget who the people that use WordPress are and the people that use WordPress in their millions, most of them just want to get into some interface to write text and click a publish button. That's true. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of them want to do that. And so a page builder in the sense of Elementor or Beaver Builder, Breezy, all of those, it's too much. They just don't need all that. They, so they want, so they want some like the gut, the vision of Gutenberg, something with an option to float an image over here, write some text over there, here, block quote, color that. That's enough. So whilst I say the vision is to make a page builder, I don't actually think that's the vision. It's to make a visual display editor, but without all the padding margins colors javascript jumpy flashy this that and the other that's going to be the role of the third party developers i think yeah um, if you if you that. um you know there was a lot of you know stuff about page builders are dead all this stuff you know when gutenberg was coming but if you just remove the word page builder and just call it call things like elementor and beaver builder an advanced design tool then that's not what gutenberg's ever going to be so mm -hmm. Just it's just the terminology makes us kind of say, oh, it's the same as this because it is technically a page builder, but those things yep. are advanced design tools. Yeah, yeah, totally different. Yeah, good point. I, I understand, but it's like uh, the the basic functionality is the same. The fact that we're calling it a basic tool and an advanced tool is because it's too basic. Uh, but but uh, having a good product means that you need to compete with the ones that are already on the market and not look at yourself as. Okay, I'm just going to stop at being the most basic solution in the on the market, uh, but and even like stuff like uh, like Nathan was mentioning right now, which I saw, I forgot the name of it, but I did see it uh, this week. The 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 um, blocks plugin that you mentioned, lazy blocks. Yes, lazy blocks. So that's already a step forward toward uh, toward creating, uh, integrating custom fields, integrating like uh, templates uh, of designs and things that are more familiar from the. Uh, from toolset or from ACF and, and their integrations with their common page, page builders that are out there. Mm -hmm. And so it does seem like they're trying to do it, but 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 I agree with you, Paul. It does seem like, like it looks like the tools that we are using are the advanced ones, but only because they are the good ones. You know, we want to have the capabilities of doing stuff, and, but we don't need to, you know, some sometimes I just drag things on the page and I, I get out of the page as is, you know, like a client would. Um, as and, and on the other side, sometimes I do kind of like go in and custom CSS and really dive into the advanced functionalities that these tools allow me to do. So I can do both with the advanced tool, but I can only do like 5% with the, uh, with the in-house tool, which is the, the most insane thing that this is the, the flag tool of the platform. Um. Mm. Moving on to themes, there are a few things which I just think are amazing. Um, things like Generate Press, which we're going to talk about. I, I like the Page Builder framework. I like Astra. Uh, they're my sort of go-to themes. 
Um, Tom Osborne, been on the podcast a couple of times from Generate Press. I know that <laughs> as if we're going to blow Paul Lacey's trumpet again, all the Generate Press sites, uh, you kind of started that off as well, didn't you? Not, um, all, of not all of no, them. Not all of them, but uh, do you need to go, Vito? Them. It's fine if you do. Um, but anyway, a lot of the nice Generate Press sites are look for Paul Lacey's name. Um, Generate Press 1.8.0. No, it's all right. Uh, so loads of nice WooCommerce stuff been put in there. You know, the little floating in the top right-hand corner, the cart updates and all of that. And it looks really nice and it's so easy. You click a button and there it all is. Um, you've also got the capability to put that in the main menu or the navigation area and, it, you know, a little, little window with the two products in it and and it opens up this is nice i like the sticky panel you can add a panel to the top where when you go to scroll down um your it, it retains all the stuff like and it says your cart basically appears in the top and nice. you can add items and take items away that's kind of nice um what else and you can fiddle now with the widths of the images basically a rock solid massive update uh, it is a huge update press. it is yeah. massive i mean uh, since, since the since the release where the, all the sites came out, uh, that that took a lot of time for Tom to develop that that add on, you know, the sites add on, and he's just been absolutely the, the the updates he's been doing since then have been what everybody wants, what everybody needs, but he still has his philosophy of I'm not putting something in there that should be a plugin. So, so he's got this, he's got you know generate press generate press premium, and some and some you know a lot of themes that you might get on something like theme forest or something that some of the lesser quality ones um, they'll just chuck in anything you know people want this okay let's chuck that in people want that oh they'll buy it if we add this let's put that in, so he's got a very strong philosophy on not adding any unnecessary bloat to generate press and I think that's why it's so popular but the updates for WooCommerce have been pretty awesome. Yep. Do you ever talk, Chris, to, I was going to say, Chris, I was literally going to ask you a question. Do you ever talk to these theme developers? And so WooCommerce works with Generate Press, right? It's a big thing. Do you ever talk to theme developers and try to get your, your Lifter LMS stuff so it's all styled nicely when they, when I, they install it? I have it? talked to uh, Tom, and I'll just leave it at that for, for now. Uh, uh, we know what that means. <laughs> but, uh, Great. I think uh, it's really uh, cool. Often people will go after the bigger markets like WooCommerce first you know like that like for example beaver builder you know added some woo stuff integration there it's a huge market but um i think this is really cool i have a lot of respect for what tom has built in our community Gener mm. generate press astra and ocean wp are the most popular themes yeah and yep. tying it in a gutenberg uh and the woocommerce product block that just rolled out woocommerce is more of a back-end framework and uh, what what the market actually wants is they want something as easy and as powerful and as beautiful as Shopify with all the customization and, and that you can do at WordPress. And I think we're getting really close. I mean, we're arguably you can do a lot more in WooCommerce than you can in Shopify. But with the product block, with this theme, Generate Press and the front end builder, I, I think we're we're getting to a you know, we're, it's trying to make e-commerce easier and more beautiful for the average yeah. user, but also the advanced user. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's a solid, solid, solid theme. If you haven't got it, it's so, I think it's for, uh, Paul, $49 a year? Yeah, right. it's like Something $49 like a year. It used yeah. to be $29 yeah. for life. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I guess both you and I have benefited from that. Um, <laughs> And he's a really nice guy. You can search him on the WP Builds podcast. I've had him on a couple of times and just nice, nice bloke. Uh, kind of guy that doesn't go to sleep until he's finished his support queue each evening, uh, which is, you know, great. Okay, so um, now I require at this point Vito to cover his ears because we're going to talk <laughs> about um, a plugin called Project Huddle. Project Huddle is a product which you install it on a, on a, like a, one of your main sites and then you can use it to get client feedback about the other sites point click you users log in and they can say i want the button red i want the and it's great we've had andre on and they've got a bit of an update and the reason i said close your ears veto is because his product is in direct competition to this one so <laughs> i'll go very very quickly for veto's sake uh you can now have client logins without needing to have a like a their own proper account they can log in with a without a password so that you just give them a sort of special link that's kind of cool 
Um, there's a whole new load of stuff where you can assign certain bits to, so you can assign conversations to other people so that they only get the notifications that they are really involved in. So if you, I don't know if you've got a designer just working on the CSS and somebody wants to talk about uh, something completely different, then they won't hopefully get the notifications. So that's, that's quite cool. And um, a whole load of lazy loading performance rendering stuff. So a load of stuff now just renders when it needs to be rendered, whereas before all the comments would come all the images would come and that's been fixed by Andre. So there we go. Test it out. It's in beta and it's 3.3.0. Chris. Uh, I'm, I just want to say I'm excited about this. And I was also the s second or third to market in, with uh, Lifter LMS in the WordPress LMS space. And there's a lot of room for innovation. And I think projects like this and this kind of niche are really good because a lot of people focus on developer problems, things like lazy blocks and stuff like that. But when you go after like a business problem, like project management with clients, it's more of a platform than a utility. Yeah, yeah. So, so with this and with what Vito's working on, I, I'm really excited for to see these types of platform plugins uh, improving and, and, and having competition and innovation in the marketplace. What we should do is get Vito and uh, Andre um on so, talk me. mags <laughs> plug in madness yeah i'm up for it i'm up for the debate you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like we said it's a community you know there's more, no, than, more, than, more than enough space yeah. right i'm going to plug three things that we did on wp builds this week we did a, an episode me and david about is web design dead we were talking about whether whether or not you know web design is becoming so easy with tools like Beaver Builder, Elementor, and all these super interesting, easy things, is it dead? Long and the short of it is no. Now you don't need to listen to it. Um, I also had Brandon <laughs> Toll on from. Uh, well, he, he, I don't know where he's from, but he was talking with me about this cool thing that he's done. He's integrated Gravity Forms with Zapier to produce gift certificates. I don't know if anybody listened to that, but it, it took him about 10 minutes to explain it. Very cool. Bit of custom PHP and Zapier chocks them a unique gift certificate. Very cool. If, you, if you've ever needed something to be produced uniquely by uh, a WordPress site and Gravity Forms, this will show you how to do it, even if it's not gift certificates. And also we had Ben Dell on from Hey Summit, which is on AppSumo at the moment. It's a platform for launching online summits. That's Chris... If you haven't seen that, you probably should look at that because it's great. Yeah, go, Chris. I actually just ran an online summit. I I actually use use Lifter to power it, but the yeah. uh, the summit is <laughs> uh, the summit concept is really cool, and it's a great way to uh, to market and add value and, and potentially create a, a product on the back end. So. Yeah, well, if you can do it with Lifter, online? that's great. How does it work online? Yeah, having like uh, a summit. The classic model of it is that you organize the event, you get a bunch of speakers around a topic or an industry, or and it's usually free while it's live. And then on the back end of the, so there's a big like list building thing going on usually, uh, where all the experts kind of invite their list to come to the mm -hmm. summit. And then uh, once you actually experience one, it's more of a fire hose and it's really intense. But if you're the target audience of a summit, there's often uh, you can buy you can buy access to it and people usually structure it into a membership site or a course that's available later. They call that the all access pass. Right. So it sounds like this is a SaaS, a SaaS way of just yeah. doing that. It's, it's hard. It's a lot of moving parts and people management. And, and well, I know that you're a big Zoom user and it integrates yeah. with Zoom. So it'll do all of that. Basically, you yeah. write in the boxes and it will set up the Zoom meetings. It'll assign the, the speakers to Panel. the Zoom yeah. meetings. It'll it'll do everything, including creating the like the images for the um for the actual events. Which um, is a lot. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And he the reason he did it is because it was really interesting. He he ran a summit last year for missing letter, his other rival product. He had a hundred speakers, right? Wow. And and about and a little way into it, he thought, this is this is crazy. So he took three days off. I think he said three. And he built this platform by himself. He's quite clever. Wow. Um, it was a very short amount of time because you interviewed yeah. him about that. And yeah, it was yeah, yeah. shocking. Everyone was shocked when he said how 
Yeah. Uh, and also, he's yeah. got a really good reputation for his missing letter product, doesn't he? I yeah. Think, um, I use it all the time. I yeah, it's it's just totally solid, just totally works. And uh, so that, yeah. you know, when I saw that product on, on AppSemo, I didn't realize it was from him and his company. So I was just like, oh, that's not going to work. So, yeah, you're going to set up a massive, you know, event and then basically it's not going to work. <laughs> like a lot luckily of things. Luckily for me, but it probably it will, isn't it? Sorry, sorry, Paul. Yeah, I was going to say, it probably say, will work, me... right? Because that guy is clever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it does. It does. I've, I've, I have tested it. Um, yeah. It also integrates with this platform, Big Marker, the one that we're using. And it does, it literally sets everything up. It goes as far as it goes in using the API, it disables the generic emails that Big Marker would send out so that mm. it, it hijacks the email queue, sends mm. its own out instead, which you can then customize. Basically, it does it all for you. And then at the end, gives you loads of statistics. And you can you can do the payment through it all. It's great. It's really good. OK, that was nothing to do with WordPress, and neither are these three. Um, F8 is a Facebook conference which recently took place. Whether you like Facebook or not, it is pretty massive and probably very important. They're going to launch a an e-commerce platform inside of WhatsApp, including payments and catalogs and all of this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm looking at the picture. I'm looking at a picture of Mark Zuckerberg at the minute. I cannot decide if it's a wax model or not. <laughs> um, I think they might have airbrushed that to make him look more of an automaton than he uh, than he appears sometimes. <laughs> but uh, there you go. I mean, that. What can you say if you're into e-commerce? You've got. Are you going to have to use this, Chris? Uh, I think it's really cool. Like the Facebook Marketplace has kind of killed Craigslist in a way. Yeah, um, I use it. Yeah, I was selling a wood stove the other day, and I put it on Facebook, and I had like a hundred messages, like from people driving eighty yep. miles away, and just like that. And I was yep. like, it just makes sense. The logical next step is to power the transaction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I exactly the same as you. Every single item that I've put on Facebook Marketplace has gone the same day, like actually gone, taken yeah. from my property. Yeah. Um, because they're hyper local. It absolutely knows where you live. It knows exactly where that product is. I've never and I ever. don't know how. It, there's it, it right at the top. In if you use the mobile app, right at the top is something which looks like a little shop, little shop front. Just click that and just add a product, add anything that you want to get rid of. It's completely free at the minute. But obviously, if Facebook could power that transaction so that you can be paid at the moment, you know, guy rocks up, wants to take your wood burning stove. Um, yeah. You know, you're not necessarily happy with dealing with cash. They don't want to deal with okay. cash as well. Yeah. They're stood next to you. Boom. Click the button. Yeah, thanks. Great. There you go. It's yours. The yeah. payment's taken. I mean, we all know there's other ways of doing that, but that would be super convenient, wouldn't it? And then Facebook gets its 1% and another $80 trillion <laughs> in the bank. Yeah, great. Okay, anyway, there you go. That'll be a thing. I wonder if people will put their whole stores on it in the same way that they do with Amazon, though. You know, if you've got like a, a, a catalog of, if your job is to sell wood stoves, you put them all on there and sell them that way. Maybe maybe there's a business in that. Um Okay, web designers of the world, we need images. We need free stock images. Now the Creative Commons bunch who are behind all sorts of the Creative Commons license, they've now got a, a search engine for free images, 300 million of them. I'm reliably told it's okay, but apparently they're not quite as, quite as good as you would pay for. That's to be expected, but it's there. Anyone want to talk about that? I checked Chris. it out and uh, I was just looked for the word like woman and... You know, if I was going to grab a picture for uh, doing some marketing and stuff, a lot of the stuff in there is like already got words on it and it's like an ad for somebody yeah, else. Okay. I was okay. looking at the stuff for commercial reuse, which is going to be, you know, the the hardest stuff to get for free. Yeah. Uh, but it's cool. I, I like having options. I personally use a tool called Libre Stock. And yeah, I know that one. I'm obsessed with that one, but I, I yeah. like seeing this. It's it's a It's hard for people building websites to like deal with this issue, but it, it's, it's, there's room for innovation here. So I'm glad to see Creative Commons working on it. I have a few tools in my arsenal of kind of lifetime deals that I've bought over the years <laughs> devoted to building images, you know, like stencil and things like that and Canva and things. And they, they integrate their APIs so that a lot of those images are now in the, in the tool itself. So, you yeah. know, it might be pixels or whatever, uh, Libra Office, uh, sorry, Libra whatever it was that you just said. Um, 
and so I yeah on splash that's that's I think is probably the big one um a lot of those images just pop in the in there and that's kind of where I found them and to the point I don't even go and search on those platforms anymore I don't go to on splash anymore I log into something like stencil find what I want and then just chuck it in and download it because I think it's quicker and their search seems to work and pulls in a whole variety of different uh, websites speaking I, of images oh sorry go on. i haven't used uh, these kind of tools in a long time which is my, that's kind of like my designer stuff to do but i am paying the money for the shutterstock stuff so if uh, yeah. Yeah. uh if there is a better solution that can just help alleviate this pain that'll be amazing even with yeah, well, splash and pixels it's just not as quality at the end of the day if you want something proper you gotta buy it yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I don't think that model's going away, is it? Basically, you, you know, if, you, if you've got 10 minutes to waste, then go and have a look. Yeah. But if, if that 10 minutes actually matters to you, just shell out the cash and buy mm-hmm. something off it. Yeah, I would agree. That's harsh. That is harsh. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Sorry. Okay, sorry. We've got 10 minutes to waste. Go and look at all these people's creative work. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Speaking of images, though, this, this, I don't know what you make of this. Or if anybody used it. I used it this week. And this blew my mind because I, I am partly terrified of AI and partly beguiled and impressed by it. This is a fabulous use of AI. It's called colorize.sg with an S in it. That is to say colorize with an S, not the American Z, I suppose. And you chuck in a black and white photo and out comes a color photo, but it really works. I yeah. threw in a picture of my primary school uh, all the kids lined up after the nativity play, right? Pretty standard image. It was unbelievably good. Like it didn't know that the black, the sheet behind us was green. So it guessed and it made it blue, but it got the Christmas tree green. It got the tinsel golden. It got all of our faces, the right color. It even got the faces of the baby Jesus on the picture in the corner. It got that right as well. And it looked like it was a photo with a color uh color bit of kit amazing veto so i actually i saw that you posted this on the group uh, just uh i think it was uh, about a week ago and it was just around like i think a day after that was uh, uh you know i'm originally from uh, tel aviv from israel and there was like the holocaust day b- back there and uh and so everyone you know all of kind of like my contacts everyone is just like sharing pictures of their uh, relatives and like their ancestors that uh, that uh, uh, endured, and everything is black and white. So I just went through my Facebook feed using this tool that I saw on yours and just dropped people's pictures back with colors, and everyone just loved it. You know, it was uh, yeah. You, know, you get to see your grandpa in color. You know, after the, the only thing you've seen is black and white ever. Uh, so For yeah, me, though, it, amazing. It's kind group. of illust- illustrative of the fact that. Like it's clever, right? It's a, it's a bit of a party trick. It it can do something. Cool. Yeah. Just imagine how difficult what's going on is yeah. to, to produce that. The knowledge that's required, the 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 amazing amount of uh, technology that's behind that image, and it does it in three seconds. And and it kind of speaks to me of the future of web design. You know, where we say, can you you know literally talk to the WordPress installation and say, no, I want the person in that photo to wear a red dress. Amazing. And it, yeah, try that. Okay. Yeah. Can she, can, can we move the image to the right a bit? No, I left a bit, bit bigger, please. And it'll do all that stuff because it knows. There we go. Paul. Snapchat can change your clothes. Right. Yeah. You can put, you know, Snapchat, you can put sunglasses on you. It's amazing. Oh, it. okay. Yeah. You just, you know, you can even put like animal faces on you. Yeah. Yeah. You look like yeah. a dog and stuff. That's how clever it is. I remember there was an app a few years ago where you could, and it was the first time you could hold up the selfie cam and you could make yourself look like a gorilla. I can't remember what it was called and you could speak and the mouth. Am I lowering the like, tone? No, 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 it's great. Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. That's where it's going though. It's all these little incremental jumps, isn't it? But, you know, yeah. in the background is a hell of a lot of learning and there's some very, very clever people doing this stuff and we're just getting drip fed the product of it all. Do you know, um, uh, this thing about AI being, you know, and, and that we are worried about it as well. I've been listening to a lot of stuff about AI and a guy was saying the other day, you know, if AI gets so clever that it becomes a threat, we won't find out about it because the first thing it will do is not tell us. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. 
what is it what is he says open the doors hal yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway we're back to That's where we're going space yeah exactly right and on that bombshell <laughs> uh, i've got nothing more to add anyone want to say anything before i say we're done in that case, we're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a great yeah. time. Yeah. The first time I'm doing this with you guys, and it was a blast. Oh, good. good. Um, no, it's very really informal. Yeah. Um, the idea is it's informal. So if you've got any comments, <laughs> open the day. what is it? What is he says? Open the doors, Hal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Anyway, we're back to two thousand space. Yeah, exactly. Right, and on that bombshell, <laughs> uh, I've got nothing more to add. Anyone want to say anything before I say we're done? In that case, we're done. <laughs> <laughs>